So a few weeks ago, I asked the AI chatbot ChatGPT for the top five best stocks to buy in 2023. And in that video, I asked you guys if you'd wanna see a dividend version of this, and most of you said yes. So in today's video, we're gonna do exactly that. I asked ChatGPT for the top five best dividend stocks to buy. And in typical all is world fashion, I'm gonna give my own opinion on each one of them and even rank them from best to worst as well to make it a little more fun too. So I hope you all enjoy the video. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Really helps the channel out a lot. Thank you for all that support. But let's go ahead and jump straight into that list. All right, now you guys probably remember from the last video that ChatGPT doesn't like to give flat out stock recommendations. So you have to reword the question a little, but here's how I did it. So first I asked, what are the best dividend stocks to buy in 2023? To which it gave me this huge response. I'm not gonna waste your time reading all of it, but it just basically said that it can't predict the future and may not have the most up-to-date and accurate financial information about stocks and companies or the market and so on but it can give me some general guidance on what to look for in good dividend stocks, specifically mentioning a good dividend yield, dividend history, earnings and revenue growth, industry and sector trends, and debt and financial health. So I simply rewarded my question to ask for five dividend stocks that have those specific qualities, and here is what it gave me. Starting with stock number one, it mentioned Verizon, ticker symbol VZ. And it had this to say about it. Verizon is a telecommunications company that has a current dividend yield of around 4.5%, a long history of dividend payments and strong earnings and revenue growth. The company's focus on wireless and fiber optic networks makes it well positioned to benefit from the growing demand for high speed internet and mobile connectivity. And I gotta say, I love this pick. I completely agree with it because I actually own Verizon stock myself for the same reasons. I can tell you right away though that uh, GPT is a little behind on the market information because Verizon's dividend yield is actually a bit higher now because the stock has been falling heavily over the past year, leaving it down close to 40% from the top and now at literally the cheapest prices that we've seen in over a decade. However, I personally feel that this might be a once in a decade buying opportunity here as the dividend is also at the highest level now that I've ever seen in it at well over six and a half percent yield which is huge i believe the only time that it was this high was during the great recession plus it's got almost two decades of consecutive growth which means they grew that dividend even during the great recession despite it already being so incredibly high and while the growth rate is now very small at just two percent you don't really need it to get a whole lot bigger because it's already so high at 6.6 percent which easily beats out most other stocks in the market, most other dividend paying stocks. And the payout ratio of about 50% is also pretty good. So it should hopefully still be safe even at these levels. The only problem with Verizon is that their financials are not going to be growing much in this horrible macro environment, but they're at least stable enough with also the most profitability of the big three against AT&T and T-Mobile. And considering they're always ranked the best in quality at currently a record breaking 30 times in a row, I would say that the stock is a pretty good pickup right now overall, getting to collect that fat dividend while you wait for the macro environment to recover. Verizon is likely not going anywhere as the market leader. So like I said, I love this pick. I'm going to rank them very high at number two for now until I see what else is on this list. Speaking of the list, GPT uh, actually went with a pretty interesting pick here for stock number two in Visa, ticker symbol V. And I say interesting because the yield is actually very small on this one, but regardless, it had this to say about the stock. Visa is a payments technology company that has a dividend yield of around 0.6%, a growing history of dividend payments and strong earnings and revenue growth. The company's focus on digital payments and e-commerce make it well positioned to benefit from the growing trend of cashless transactions and online shopping. And yeah, I definitely agree with most of that. In fact, Visa is another stock here that I actually own myself. The only thing that I don't really agree with GPT on though is that dividend. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's got some of the 
absolute best growth metrics that you could ever wish for, like a tiny payout ratio of 20%, so it's super safe, a substantial growth rate of almost 18%, so it's getting noticeably larger over time, and over a decade of consecutive growth, so management is clearly committed to paying it. But at just about a 0.8% yield, I mean, that's so tiny that you might not even notice it, especially with how high inflation is right now, just completely wiping that value away. So I think you have to look at Visa as more of just a regular stock overall that happens to also pay you a tiny little dividend as a nice added bonus, but not a major reason to actually invest in it, which to be fair, Visa has always been a great stock just on its own. I mean, even with the disastrous 2020 lockdowns and the current economy that is in the gutter, Visa has still managed to put up some incredible financials, growing both their top and bottom line uh, by over 20% each last year. Now, granted, their growth is now falling back down to around 10% going forward, but for a company the size of Visa that is already so large and well-established in the market to be growing at double-digit rates with another 15% EPS growth per year expected over the next five years, I mean, that's pretty freaking impressive. Don't forget, Visa already controls over 60% of the credit card market in America and a little less globally at 40%, which leaves some room for expansion, but it's still number one in terms of market share too. And like GPT said, there's still some room for growth in areas of digital payments and e-commerce where Visa is able to collect a small fee on every transaction that is processed through their market-leading network, which is how they've been able to command such large software-like profit margins above 50%. As a result, the stock rarely dips and is usually trading near an all-time high unless you're able to catch it during a rare dip. Overall, Visa can easily be treated as a core staple in most people's portfolio. And like I said, I love the stock myself, but as specifically a dividend play, I think there are way more attractive options out there in the market. So I'm going to have to actually rank it pretty low here at number four, just because the dividend is so small that it's almost not even a factor to consider when investing in the stock, even though, like I said, I really do enjoy owning it long term. Speaking of dividend yield, though, stock number three has a much higher yield, and that's going to be in the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE, which the chatbot had this to say about it. Pfizer is a pharmaceutical company that has a current dividend yield of around 3.4%, a long history of dividend payments and strong earnings and revenue growth. The company's focus on V-shots, oncology, and rare diseases makes it well-positioned to benefit from the growing demand for innovative and life-saving drugs. And yeah, I would agree with most of that too. I mean, I fully acknowledge that Pfizer has always been a controversial company, just like any other pharmaceutical giant throughout history that I've never really trusted myself. But just from an investment standpoint alone, it's still pretty attractive and I've been buying the stock myself for a couple different reasons. First of all, that dividend is paying almost 4% now, which is pretty high, and yet it only carries a tiny payout ratio below 25%, so it should be more than safe going forward. That's in large part because the pepperoni V-shot alone has doubled the size of Pfizer and turned them into the largest pharmaceutical company in the world in the course of just one to two years uh, time, which is... Something that I know I've mentioned many times before on the channel, but guys, that's so unheard of to go from a $40 billion company to over $100 billion in what feels like the snap of a finger. And yet the stock has actually taken a beating this past year, falling by almost 35% from the top in fear of the pepperoni V-shot sales disappearing as we move past the pandemic, which is partly true. I mean, sales will decline this year by over 30% before returning to growth the year after. But once that happens, they'll still be generating close to double their pre-pandemic sales. And more importantly, the damage will have already been done in the sense that Pfizer already made tens of billions of dollars from a drug that was almost entirely subsidized by taxpayer dollars, which they are now using to acquire numerous companies for, you guessed it, tens of billions of dollars. The end result of which is that they will still be the largest pharmaceutical company in the world with a giant pipeline of treatments that is only growing larger over time. And because of that, I gotta rank them very high on this list. I mean, 
I would even say that they're tied with Verizon, but because Verizon has the bigger dividend yield, I guess I'll count that as the tiebreaker and just give Verizon the slight edge at number one, but I'll still put Pfizer you know, right next to them, right under them at basically number two. Both very solid choices as a dividend play. Uh, all right, guys, that's going to leave us now with the final two stocks of the list. And coming in at number four, it's going to be a fan favorite for many long-term dividend investors, including the great Warren Buffett with Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, which the chatbot had this to say about it. Coca-Cola is a beverage company that has a dividend yield of around 3.2%, a long history of dividend payments, and strong earnings and revenue growth. The company's focus on non-alcoholic beverages such as soda, water, and sports drinks makes it well positioned excuse me, to benefit from the growing trend of health-conscious consumers. But uh, you know what, guys? I think we finally have a stock here that I overall do not really agree with GPT on. Now, sure, KO, of course, has some very popular beverage brands like Coca-Cola, Powerade, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, Smart Water, Minute Maid Juice, Vitamin Water, and many more. The list goes on. Plus, they pay a very solid dividend that yields close to 3% on a ginormous six decades of consecutive growth, giving them official dividend king status. However, apart from that, the rest is pretty mediocre, as the growth rate is so small that it's almost non-existent, while the payout ratio is so high at over 70% that the dividend is just not likely to grow much at all going forward. So you're basically getting a 3% dividend and that's kind of about it. I mean, the stock price itself is already near a record high despite only climbing by around 40% in the past five years, which, guys, you should know that this is even worse performance than the S&P 500, which had 55% gains by comparison. So it's kind of the same as just owning the broader market. Plus, the valuation is more expensive than the sector on virtually any metric you can think of. And at the end of the day, as large and as dominant as Coca-Cola is, they're simply not diversified enough outside of just a bunch of sugary drinks that I think don't really have a lot more room to grow, at least just in my personal opinion. I mean, if you want to own Coca-Cola, why not just buy PepsiCo stock, who also has at least many other, you know, just as many iconic beverages, but it's also diversified into solid snacks like Fritos, Cheetos, Doritos, Lay's, and more. And I know those are not healthy, but they have some other he healthier brands too. Also, Coca-Cola does similar things. But what I'm saying is PepsiCo is at least diversified in their business with also solid snacks. Plus, it has much better performance at close to 70% gains in the past five years, and yet they still have about the same valuation with a very comparable dividend too. The yield is a little smaller, but it makes up for it with a higher growth rate, a lower payout ratio, and still five decades of growth, so it's still a dividend king. I personally own PepsiCo stock myself, so I'm probably biased, but I just have virtually no interest in owning Coca-Cola, and for that reason, I'm just gonna have to rank it pretty low here at number five. But finally, guys, that's going to leave us with the final last stock of the list. Coming in at stock number five, we have another one here that I rarely ever talk about on the channel. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever talked about them, maybe a couple times. But that stock is going to be Texas Instruments, ticker symbol TXN, which the chatbot had this to say about it. Texas Instru Instruments is a semiconductor company that has a dividend yield of around 2.3%, a long history of dividend payments, and strong earnings and revenue growth. The company's focus on analog and embedded processing technologies makes it well positioned to benefit from the growing demand for connected devices and the Internet of Things. As for me, I mostly agree with a lot of that. However, I've always really seen TXN as kind of a mixture between some really good attributes with some bad ones too. I think it's a decent stock overall, but nothing too exciting. First of all, the business is pretty good because unlike Nvidia or Intel that focus on really high performance chips, TXN has instead centered their business around making all the smaller, kind of simpler chips for everyday use. For example, they make chips that process things like the push of a button, turning that analog event into a digital signal that can then trigger another function. And it's why their chips are used by more than 100,000 different customers 
all around the world. Unfortunately though, that broad exposure leaves them vulnerable to both market upswings as well as market downturns, and that's why you saw their financials explode in both 2021 and 2022 when demand was still fairly high, but now that we're moving past the pandemic and the economy is in the trash, their sales are actually falling by about 10% this year before returning to growth. Fortunately though, Texas Instruments is using the excess cash that they made during the pandemic to invest billions of dollars into new production facilities in America, which I think is a fantastic strategy for their business. However, in the meantime, their business will be slow moving, and yet the stock doesn't really reflect that, as it's still trading near a record high at a pretty rich valuation compared to this sector. Cheaper on a forward PE ratio, but much more expensive on a longer PEG ratio, so I don't really know what to make of that. Analyst price targets are also right around its current price, which tells me that you're probably not getting, you know, like some really good deal here, some kind of steal at these levels. Granted, the dividend is pretty good with nearly two decades of growth, a very high growth rate above 16%, a good payout ratio below 50%, and a decent enough yield that is close to 3%. So I still like them a lot more than Coca-Cola, but it's definitely not at the same level of a business like Visa or a dividend like Pfizer or Verizon. So I think I'll bump Visa up to number three and I'll squeeze Texas Instruments in at number four. But there you have it guys, I gave Verizon the top spot for the best all around dividend, but Pfizer comes in at a very close second place with a super strong business and still a very good dividend. Then I gave Visa number three, despite the tiny dividend, just because their business is so incredibly strong. And then I put Texas Instruments at number four as a solid but still kind of mediocre play. And then Coca-Cola at number five, who I just have no real interest in owning at all. But what do you guys think? Overall, I think it was a pretty solid list, especially stocks one to three. Mouthwatering dividend in Verizon at number one, got a very solid business in Visa at number three, and then Pfizer just fits kind of perfectly right in the middle there. So I, I personally like the list, four and five, I think could be swapped out for something else, but overall not a bad list. Let me know what you guys think, or also let me know if you'd want me to ask anything else of chat GPT and give my opinion on it or if there's any other types of stocks that you want it to, to recommend or suggest. I'd love to hear those suggestions, but thank you so much for stopping by my friends. I hope you're all doing well and I will catch you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.